I'm Steve Backshaw, adventurer, explorer, and all-round daredevil. I've teamed up with the Brave Bones Club to teach some competition-winning adventurers how to get the most out of the great outdoors. Let's see what we've got in store for them. So, today's challenge is tracks and signs. I'm going to need all of you to become wildlife detectives. We're going to head out into this wonderful heathland and look for signs of animal homes, where animals have been feeding, and where animals have been moving. What do you reckon? You up for the challenge? Yeah! Let's go! It's a lizard. What a great start. Common lizard within minutes of having started. So, what have we got here? Some burrow. Yeah, it's a bit old. Absolutely. You can see that there's a cobweb across the front, lots of dried leaves filling in the entrance. This hasn't been used for a long time, but still, definitely a rabbit home. You see this white tube here? Yeah, yeah. That is silk, and can you see who's inside it? Yeah, spider. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of trip lines. They'll be tripped and she'll come out and nail the insect that's nearby. When you're out watching wildlife, there are three S's to bear in mind. The first is stealth. Most wild mammals can hear far better than we can, so it's important to learn the art of silence. Walk carefully, quietly, cautiously, and pay particular attention to the ground you're going over. Also, if you keep quiet, you have much more chance of hearing other wild animals. What have you got, girls? We found an ant nest. Oh, yes, so you have. Have you found anything else? We found some rabbits up there. Oh, yes, perfect find. So you can tell an awful lot, not just the animal that it's come from, but how long ago it was here, and in some cases, what it's been eating as well. So he was here maybe last night. You could tell that because they're fresh, they're still glossy. Good detective work, girls. Mm -hmm. The second S is style. Bright, gaudy colours really stand out against the natural environment and animals will see you coming from a mile off. I'm not suggesting you go full on camouflage, but dull, muted colours definitely work best. Once you get really into it, you can even tuck bits of bracken into your hat or your belt loops. Just make sure you get rid of them before you go out in public. Who can tell me what that is? Third row. Right, OK, so looking at that particular print, we've got three toes facing forwards, one toe facing backwards. There's no webbing in between the toes. So what does that mean? Something which can't swim. Can't OK, swim. yes, good. So it's not going to be a gull, it's not going to be a duck, it's not going to be a goose. This, I think, is the footprint from a crow. You can still see pretty much exactly where this bird's walked. So it's certainly been this morning. So even from this one small drying up puddle, you can read a whole story about what animals have been doing, even if you haven't seen them. OK, well, I think we've done pretty well in the heathland. Should we head back to the woods and see what we can find there? Yeah. yeah. Great. And lastly, sight. Our eyes and our vision are our most important tool, but they can be improved upon. Having a head torch can really focus your attention, and binoculars and a spotting scope can do the same thing during the day. Having a defined search image of what you're looking for makes a massive difference for focus. A deer that's no more than about 20 metres away from us now. Do you see what kind of deer it was? Uh, no. Is it a red deer? No, no. It's much too small for a red deer. I think it was probably a monk jack. Monk jack. Yes. Yeah. Well, do you know what you've done really, really well? Is not wearing bright, loud colours and having a camouflage on. That's probably made a massive difference. <laughs> oh, wow. OK, this is perfect. So when you've got a whole bunch of shells together like this, there's only one thing it can be. This is from a bird called a song thrush. And what they'll do is fly out, catch the snails, bring them back here, and they'll have one particular hard tree root or a stone that they use as an anvil, and they'll smash the snails against it so that they can get to the nice animal inside. And this is perfect, perfect evidence of a song thrush feeding. So I know that human beings don't like stinging nettles very much, but animals love them. And then sometimes you'll find a nettle leaf that's tied up into a knot and sealed together with silk. And on the inside, you see that? Is that a spider's egg? That is a spider with her egg sac, guarding it inside a sleeping bag of stinging nettle. And that's why having nettles in your back garden is fantastic for wildlife. I think you've all done brilliantly today. You've found things that other people would just walk right past. So what's been the highlight of the day, boys? We found a mother spider carrying her egg sac. It was also in the leaf. And what about for you two? We found evidence of a song thrush bird eating its prey. Nice. 
And girls? We've seen a um, deer, I think it was a monk jack, but it was in the distance and it was really beautiful, it was just roaming around. Well, I think it's been a pretty good day, but I reckon we can still find a few more things. Should we head off? Yeah. yeah. Let's see what you can get. Learning to read the stories that wildlife leaves behind when you don't see it is incredibly important. From bird song to tracks to droppings, all of these things can completely enrich your experience of being outside. So get on out there and give it a go. If you enjoyed this video, then stick around for another Brave Bones Club adventure. I'm kind of hoping it'll give you some ideas for your own adventures to have at home.